Hey everybody, Nathan Peterson here, licensed therapist. Today we're going to talk about hoarding. What is it? Why do people do it? And what are the treatment skills to stop? Hoarding is complicated. It's not just an individual who decides to hold on to all these items for fun. Here is a description of somebody who actually has hoarding disorder. A person who collects and keeps many items, even things that appear useless or have no value. These items clutter living spaces and keep the person from using these areas of their home as they want, meaning they cannot use their kitchen table. They haven't used it in months, maybe even years. Maybe they haven't sat on their couch in a long time. Their world continues to shrink until there's only a few places left in their home to actually reside. It's important, however, to know that these items cause distress or they cause problems in their day-to-day -day life. If an item is thrown away, it can cause immense amounts of anxiety. Many I've worked with personally explain to me that throwing an item away almost feels like they are throwing a memory away throwing part of themselves away. It's the grocery bag that they got when they went shopping with their mom 10 years ago. It's the decoration they got for their future grandchild. The jewelry making kit that they got so they could learn a new skill. It's those 10 blankets they saw on sale with great intentions of giving them away, but they never did. Every item has meaning, even if they forgot they had it. What is interesting is that when we pick up an item they completely forgot they had, they know exactly why they wanted it. They know exactly what the use is going to be, where they got it from, and why it's important to hold on to it. It could be a traumatic moment that happened in somebody's life that started their hoarding. It could be abuse, loss of money, loss of spouse, but any individual can hoard and not have any trauma in their life. There can be genetic components with this as well. It doesn't have to be a history of hoarding. It could be OCD, anxiety, hair pulling, skin picking, it could be hoarding, but hoarding behaviors begin early in life, yet individuals seek treatment around 50 years old. So why can't they just throw these things away? Wouldn't their life be so much better if their home were just clean? Well, yeah, but no. Wow. Yes, because they can use their furniture again. They can have guests over. They don't have the shame. They can cook in their kitchen. And no, because it means that they would likely feel guilt, fear, and anger by getting rid of these items. They feel that these items have value, that it could be used in some way. They feel responsible for these objects. And I've heard some even say, it feels like they are giving a funeral to their item once they throw it away, if they do. It is that distressing. Even if it's a napkin, something you wouldn't think matters. Here is the cycle that I typically see. The joy or delight when getting this new item happens. It's now in their life. It's now in their area, in their home. It's a comfort. Then it's the anxiety that comes from, oh no, do I need to get rid of this thing someday? If I did, I'm gonna feel super anxious. I do not wanna feel anxious. So I'm just gonna leave it. So I feel joy, I feel anxious, I leave the item. Think about the next item and the next item and the next item. It piles up. Good feelings bring items in. Bad feelings take items out. Why would we want to face a bad feeling? You can see why over time this causes an excess of items in their home. Denial of a problem overtakes and starts interfering in their life. They come up with excuses why the item is more important than using their kitchen table again, sitting on the couch, moving around their home freely. I also want to say that in no way am I shaming these individuals. I feel so bad for the cycle that they are in, which is why I'm gonna teach you what we're gonna actually do about it, because there are treatment skills. You've probably seen the show Hoarders, right? Often by the end of the episode, they had a cleaning crew come in and take truckloads of stuff away. They're excited, yes, we did it, you're recovered. It looks all fine and dandy on the show, but what you don't see are the weeks, months, years of recovering from such events. In other words, don't go into someone's house and throw all their things away. And no, I'm not bashing on hoarders. They've got some good things as well. It's a very methodical process. We've got to switch our brain from thinking the stuff is the problem. Actually, the individual's brain is throwing off some signals that are just getting in the way of life. If we only focus on the stuff, the individual doesn't heal. I've seen it firsthand working in various homes. We would clean and clean and clean for hours. We would vacuum. The couch is ready to go. Go enjoy it. It looked hopeful. 
you can use that couch again. Yes. One week later, come back. Can't use that couch. It is completely full of stuff. So this is how the treatment actually works. And I find it only works if the individual wants it. More times than not, it's a family member calling me asking for help for their loved one. It can cause extreme strain on the family who wants it so badly that their loved one just won't stop. Yet they often want to help. They don't know what to do, even with the risk of their health and safety, even with a fire. So how do we treat it? We challenge the thoughts and beliefs about the need to keep various items. Here's what it may look like. We write down all the areas in your home that you want to start using again. We want to rank them from the most to least important. Maybe it's their bedroom that's most important. I want to use my bed again. I want to be able to sleep on there. So we literally go to the bedroom. We pick up an item. It doesn't matter. Could be just any item. Whatever is in my hand is what we're working on. It could be anything. And we ask the following question. Do I use it? Have I used it in the past month? Do I need it? Meaning, will something bad happen if I don't have it in my life? And it can't be, I'll need it someday. It has to be right now. Do I really, really love it? And does it have a home, a dedicated space that it can live? Do I love it enough to fit in that home? And a home can't be, yeah, somewhere in the living room, boop. No, it has to be a place that is dedicated for this thing that is not interfering with life. When we work through these questions, more times than not, we find that the item actually isn't needed. It isn't loved enough, but that drive to keep it is still so strong. So we work with that, use cognitive behavioral therapy to think through these moments, process emotions and what it means to them. And eventually we might throw that item away. I make it very clear that I do not throw an item away. You do. They do. They need that distress to process through it to realize they are going to be okay without it. It is interesting that in my experience, it seems that every time we pick up an item, it's got a story. It's got a meaning. I got that napkin when I went to the fair with my grandkids five years ago. If I throw it away, it means I'm going to lose that memory. It means I don't love my grandkids. We repeat this process over and over and over until the room is clean. Sometimes it takes hours to throw away one item. But what I find is that when it's not forced, they learn and the process gets quicker. Here are some phrases that are traps. I could use this someday. What if I need it later? What if I made the wrong choice by throwing this away? What if I regret it? No, I'm going to start on this project next month. If the item is something we are going to hold on to, we take time to put that item in its place. It has to have a home. We don't create new piles to sort through later. That necklace goes in the jewelry box. We go do that literally right now. The jacket goes in the closet. But here's a problem we often run into. The jacket goes in the closet, but oh my goodness, the closet is completely full. How are we gonna put it in there? So what do we do? We actually start working on the closet. If I love this enough to keep it, I need to figure out what else I don't love enough to throw away. Sometimes we create various rules. I can have up to five items in a box that I'm just not sure right now what we're gonna do with it. But once I hit with that five items, I have to make a decision. There's no choice. I got to make a decision about these things. It has to be natural. Nothing pushed, nothing forced. And like I said, I'm not bashing these hoarding shows. I do think that many feel the best way is just to remove it all. That's what I hear from, from family members that call me. Can we just go in and just like remove everything and then her life's gonna be happy? No, it doesn't work that way because it just leaves more space for more things to be collected for in the future. Gives a bigger drive to actually go collect more things. Without the proper care and therapy to work through this pain and distress, the cycle continues. Sometimes we practice going to various places and being there without actually buying anything without actually getting something, even if it's free. Allowing the brain to tolerate this discomfort. When somebody is serious about treatment, they want a better lifestyle. They are willing to work through this pain and discomfort. They can get better. That is the truth, but it has to be them. There is hope. Porting is often related to OCD and can be treated as well. Go watch this video on OCD and what it actually looks like to see if you can make a connection of the thought that, oh my goodness, I'm struggling today.